Welcome to Little Horse Racing All the Time. I'm your host, Al. Today, December 4th, 2022, we are going to talk a little bit about the Del Mar Rainbow Six today. It's closing day at Del Mar, and there is a carryover of over $541,000 mandatory payout. We're going to take a look at some of those races and how to play, how to approach this pick six if you are indeed taking it on. We'll get to all that, but first, coffee. Nice. Maxwell House, original blend. We have a mandatory payout. Final weekend, closing weekend, and now closing day at Del Mar. It has been a tremendous meet and a lot of fun. We've been covering Del Mar with live shows, live handicapping shows in real time here on all horse racing all the time. This is a show for horse racing fans and especially horse players and handicappers, handicappers out there looking to improve their game or share their wisdom with others. On this show, we handicap the races in real time when we do live shows. From the time the boards open, right up until post time posting, a lot of us post our picks, me included, I do it for every race, shortly before they get in the gate. So you see, who we were playing, our suggested uh, contenders, what we see in the contenders, who are the throwouts. We handicap the races in real time. So want to be there for those shows. And we don't just cover Del Mar. We cover other tracks as well during the week. We do, for the most part, a daily show. At least sometimes cover even two tracks. Yesterday uh, on the show, we covered Aqueduct and Del Mar. Today, it's just going to be Del Mar. If you want to join us, for the live handicapping shows, there's a link to that show below. And that's going to start at 3 p.m. Eastern time and post time at Del Mar, 3.30. So let's take a look at some of these races. How do you approach the pick six? Do you even take it on? Even for 20 cents, the costs can pile up dramatically. But And there's a lot of players out there and big players that are going to be covering these races today. Um, like a blanket, really. So what do you, what chance do you have to win if you're not, uh, you know, spending $20,000 or thousands of dollars on a ticket? Well, for starters, there's a mandatory payout today. So no one has been hitting the pick six for a while. And it looks, the odds are there's not going to be, it's a jackpot rainbow six. So for the full payout, there has to be just one winner. And I believe that's going to be unlikely, unlikely looking at the card today. And the pick six, the race is four to nine, challenging, very, very challenging races. How can you take this on? What suggestions do I have for playing the pick six? Well, one way is to team up with some of your friends. Team up with some of your friends. Each of you put in a certain amount. This way you can cover the races. Uh, you can get better coverage in these races and give yourself a better chance. And since there's probably going to be multiple winners, the payout for the pick six today is going to be infl inflated with multiple winners, considering there's a 541,000 plus um, carryover within there. So you can make good money today if you have some nice picks included in there, even if there are other winners. Again, yeah. To get the jackpot, there has to be only one winner. And most likely, there's going to be multiple winners. So consider teaming up with some of your racing friends. We're going to look at some of these races. And another suggestion here, if you're, you know, you're not going to have thousands to put into it, you want to find a race. You want to find at least a race or two that you can single, that you can single, or limit it to two horses, two horses. This way you could spread a little bit more in the other races. And I suggest not taking on the pick six and, and handicapping the races uh, right after post time. You wanna look these races over in advance. Uh, post time right now is about four and a half hours away as I'm recording this video. So give yourself some time to look over those races. If you wanna take races one at a time, Handle the pick six races first, four through nine, handicap those six races, and really try and take a look at what's going on there uh, in advance. Also, 
check out the scratches. Check out the scratches as soon as possible. And maybe this way you have an idea of who to throw out and who uh, a scratch can affect the entire race of one horse. Maybe it's a big speed horse that affects the pace. Yeah, you get the idea. So look at the scratches, get the scratches at, at Del Mar as soon as possible. And this video can work for any pick six, really, whether it's at Aqueduct or the other tracks, Gulfstream also offers the Rainbow Six. So you may want to go back to this video or share it with some of your friends. This way they have an idea what to look for when taking on the, on the pick six. So try and find those races where you can now field. Hopefully you can get at least one race with a single in there. You don't have to hit the pick six. Realize, number one, don't beat yourself up if you, if you get knocked out. Don't feel like you have to cover every race extensively. You're looking for a bargain here. Like, you know, this, uh, the whales, the, the ones that are covering with thousands of dollars, and there will be some of those out there today. You want to, if you want to find the races where you can narrow the race down as soon as possible. Hopefully you have two, possibly three legs where you can limit your contenders uh, to, to two or less and get, and get that single home. This way you can cover in some of the other races. Now, what kind of a uh, card do we have today? It's the closing day. We have a gigantic card. There's a G1 race. There's two graded stakes races on this nine race card. And I'll take a look at some of these races in the sequence and just give you an idea. Again, I'm doing a live show at 3 p.m. Eastern time today, December 4th, 2022. The link, look for the link for that down below. This way you know where to find it. Or if you don't want to go on a witch hunt, just subscribe to the channel and you'll get notifications every time I do a live show or I uh, release a new pre-recorded show video like I'm doing right now. And share it with your racing friends. It's a different racing experience here on this show. We do it in live time. We're not coming out there doing a racing show like most others, released five hours before post time. And sometimes they're standing around in suits. Sometimes it's just there, you know, sitting there giving their picks. Oh, I like one, four, and three in that order of the first race. In the second race, I like eight. And they leave it at that. Here on All Hurts Racing all the time, we break it down. We look at all the handicapping angles. And it's a great show for beginners because you're hearing different angles, different things we look for when we handicap the races in real time, a jockey trainer info, workout info, uh, records at the track, records at the distance. You hear the angles we're looking at here, how certain starters do with first time uh, starters, uh, the ones who can win early in those difficult races. So let's get started. We'll take a look at uh, briefly at some of the races that are along the way to get this pick six home rainbow pick six here at Del Mar closing day, 541K carryover, and that begins in the fourth race. So let's take a little look here at the fourth race and how this all gets started. Now in the fourth race, we have a six furlong maiden claiming, right? And right off the bat, they, they make it difficult for us here. And it's a brutal race to start the rainbow six. So you're going to have to earn it. And uh, I, I see here there are 13 entries in the field. Uh, the four already is scratched. So 12 entries in this field. And you got one, two, three, four first-time starters in this race. So this is probably one of them that you're going to have to use a little extra coverage. And when I do the show today, we're going to be taking a closer look at this, looking at the percentages of the trainer. And there is one that opens at... To give you an idea, uh, the, the opening favorite in that race is, is number nine, Tenacious Lady. And, and really, by the numbers, by the buyer figures, there are, it opens at four to one. With, a, with an opening favorite, this is probably one of the legs you're going to have to cover a few if you want to get out of it alive. I think that a lot of people are going to get knocked out in the first leg. So you're going to want to take an extra look at that. And we're going to be talking about it on the show today. And I'll tell you... There are a lot of good players that uh, the live shows are interactive, interactive, open discussion, Q&A with uh, live chat. So there are other players out there, a lot of really big winning players who participate in the live shows and they give out the winners and they're not giving out the winners after the races. They're giving out the race, the horses they like and their actual plays in real time, in real time 
with ample time for you to enter those uh, wages if you want to follow suit with some of the players on the show. And you'll see it. If you watch the show, you will not believe the hits some of these guys and, and women are making on these shows. So if this is going to be a real tough leg, uh, and, the, and the, the fourth race goes off at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So that's when the pick six, Rainbow Six, begins. So this this leg right here, 12 races, first time starters, that's going to be a doozy. So uh, be careful with that. That's that'll be probably that'll be one of the legs you want to spread a little bit or be extra careful. And if you get knocked out, you get knocked out. But you don't want to get knocked out in the fourth leg. So you may not want to add to that leg. Now race five, we have a G3 a G3 race. We have better entries. And this is one where you're you're probably going to be able to narrow the field down a little bit. And even then, it, it looks like there are a few in there uh, that have a shot. They have we have a five to two opening favorite, the seven speedboat beach, uh, we with uh, with with a really big back number, and that's a Baffert entry. So this may be one you want to narrow because Bob Baffert means business. Like uh, number seven has a, has a one hundred four buyer figure in race five. Uh, did throw a clunker last race, but there are other a couple others. There's another one that's three to one in there that has some nice races, and and another one in there that's the four RGs and number three first piece. Now that one it looks seems a little light in the figures. The last race was pretty good. Gets Mike Smith. Do you single Baffert and say, okay, I'm going to get this one done? And you know, you know, everybody's going to have Baffert in that race. Can you beat Baffert? If you're the small guy and you say, I'm not going to go crazy on this pick six, let me go with the four, three to one, who gets the top jock, uh, JJ Hernandez at the me, you know, a 30% jock. Or do you try and really go for it with the third choice with uh, Mike Smith, Hall of Famer up on the first piece, number three, five to one? Everyone's going to have Baffert. Let's face it. And can you beat Baffert? If you want to take a shot and there's something you don't like about the others, we're going to look closer at these entries, not talking speed, we're not talking pace, anything right here, just giving you a preview of these races, but giving you an idea how to look at this and how to approach this. Because uh, a lot of people are going to have Baffert. And if you if you want to take a, sta a stance with a single, and uh, that Baffert has a second leading jockey, Flavian Pratt up, who trails only Hernandez, he's over 23%. If people, of course, a lot of people are going to single this race. And a lot of people are going to single Baffert. And if you can get past, if you can get past this race, if you're brave enough with a single, other than Baffert, you're going to lose a lot of your, a lot of your competition is going to drop out of this rainbow six. Because there's going to be a lot of singles out there in the players with Bob Baffert and Bob Baffert alone. So consider that, and there's nine entries in that field. It's a, uh, it's a G3 and it's being run at a mile. Now the third leg, uh, we have a six furlong race, optional claiming race, and it's this may be another one where you could narrow the field. Now the five, if you wanna use two that race and cover another one besides Baffert, that's okay, because in stakes races, all the, all the horses have well, uh, or have well intentions, and you'd still get rid of a lot of players uh, that single Baffert. And the sixth race has only eight contenders, and it looks like um, you could probably be able to narrow the sixth race down to two as well and still cover the favorite. So five and six look like two of the races where you can go narrow. It's the four so far, the fourth race, which looks like it's going to be a real tough one to get by with the first-time starters. And the ones that do have experience, they seem fairly evenly matched as well. So we move past the six and now down to the seventh. The seventh is a crown jewel. It's the, uh, the biggest race uh, of the uh, close for the closing day at Del Mar of the year. It's a G1 event, the top tier horses, championship caliber horses, G1, the highest grade of all the grades. And in this race, they don't make it that much easier. Uh, they, there's 10 entries and we have Chad Brown in from New York won yesterday in a turf race here. Pletcher didn't get the job done uh, in the finale on his big fa favorite number nine. Uh, Wicks was his name, I believe. And um, so we have Chad Brown in town. We have Irod Ortiz coming from the East Coast. 
uh, to ride here in this big event. We have, uh, and Chad Brown's not the favorite in this G1 event. It's a turf race. And Chad Brown may offer you a price. I don't think he's going to go off to six to one. He's one of the best turf trainers in the United States, if not the best. Uh, just not some dead here. He owns the New York racing circuit, Aqueduct, Belmont, and Saratoga, and does a heavy damage in, uh, in other tracks as well. Uh, he does racing in Monmouth and Gulfstream. And yesterday he came out to Del Mar for the first time of the year and uh, knocked it out of the park first try, first asking. And who else in this race? Uh, 10 races, 10 horses, a lot of entries. That are, we do have an eight to five, also with Shad Brown, Regal Glory. Now, Regal Glory, the two Browns really look, if you want a single, this might be a single race. Uh, you have Flavian Pratt riding for Brown. He has two entries here. The favorite, number six at eight to five. And number nine, uh, his, his entry, uh, Dulce Zell, at, at six to one. So maybe you just want to play the two Browns. Regal Glory, Regal Glory has uh, last three buyer figures. Regal Glory has, um, is Dulce Zell, his nine, has no races over the last three that can um, match any of the three from Regal Glory, especially the last two, three back. None of, none of the others in here have races that can match it as well. Maybe a seven or uh, Wakanaka, uh, Irish horse, and with Rosario up at five to one. But this is one where you could probably narrow it down to the two Browns, and maybe you say, I'm going to, this is my single race, and I'm going to go with Regal Glory. This looks like the best one in here. And uh, you take your eight to five, and maybe use your single there. If it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. The key is covering in some of the races, and this would be your most likely single race so far in this sequence. Uh, number six in the seventh Regal Glory. And we're going to talk more about it on the live show. Again, the link to the live show down below today. Um, Del Mar Racing um, live today, and I'll have the, uh, the the link afterwards. Or if you don't want to you know, come back to this, you can just subscribe to the channel. Let your horse racing friends know about the channel. This is a different racing experience. And watch the show for a while, and you will see, you will catch on very quickly why. And... Okay, so the seventh race, yeah, this is one where you can narrow it down. Now we get to the last two races. What do we see? Rainbow six, pick six, carry a closing day at Del Mar. Now everybody's starting to sweat. We're wondering how many people are alive, how many people have got knocked out. Have you selected one of the longer ones in one of the previous races where you narrowed it down? Now you're going to test the year line to make some bucks. Then we move to the eighth race because there's a mandatory payout again today. 541k plus carry on. And now that we go to the ninth race, we have 10 entries. It's a starter stake. It's a, they, it's, they say it's a starter stakes, whatever, but the purse is not that high, 38k. And it's one mile and it's on dirt. You get 10 entries and you look down and it's a fairly evenly matched race. We have three entries here that are uh, from the favorite that's five to two, Bright Leaf with Sadler. Uh, to Papel for with Irod Ortiz up for Glatt, who, who wins um, three to one, the seven street art, the third choice, uh, four to one with the top jock Hernandez up. What about the others? Uh, the others have races that if they run their best race, um, they can compete. They can compete. But uh, the favorite, yeah, the favorite comes off of the best last race, number four, Bright Leaf. That doesn't mean, you know, but the race is two, three back. There are others that, that can run with it, like the five who's six to one. So this is a race you may want to spread it a little bit at first glance, looking by the buyer figures later um, after the handicapping and then on the show live, really breaking it down. And after the scratches, that can all change. Maybe there's one out there that has a factor, maybe a big early speed factor. Uh, the 10 horse has a couple of decent races and uh, it opens 20 to one. If the others don't bring their A game, might be part of it, at least the payout. But this looks like a fairly evenly matched race. Even the two has a shot. So uh, this is one you may want to go two, three deep. Two, three deep. Uh, but, or maybe you can narrow it to two. But we're going to take a closer look at uh, at this one at the, sh uh, at the show. 
And the thing that I think is, is that stands out here, uh, Irod Ortiz, one of the top jocks in New York, is riding the second choice, Papal, Papali, or Papel, I don't know, uh, number eight at three to one. And by the buyer speed figures, there are others that look superior to this one. So I think we have a, a weak second choice, you know, just looking at it briefly and, and giving you an overview, uh, uh, a preview of this race. I think the eight might be uh, very vulnerable, vulnerable and take money because of the Ortiz and the trainer gl glatt factor. But we'll have to see. Does it? And now on the final leg of the Rainbow Six, uh, they ended up with it another one, a turf race, 10, race uh, uh, 10 entries on turf, a mile and a 16th. Is, now, when we come down to, now this is where the bread and butter is. Now you could look at the payouts and see how many people are left and hopefully uh, there's not a jackpot. Hopefully there's not a jackpot with one lone winner, uh, because if that one, if if there is just one lone lo lo potentially uh, jackpot winner in this race, what are the odds of it being one of us? Probably be somebody who covered the race with a uh, twenty grand bet or something, or a team of players. Maybe you're a lucky one. Sometimes there's somebody uh, stories of some person just playing the races randomly, not even a fan of racing, just picks a horse or two every race and hits the jackpot. That has happened before, but the odds of that happening today is not, is uh, really unlikely. But looking at this race, 10 entries review, uh, can we single it? Uh, we have a Baffert on a six to one horse uh, ridden by Rosario and okay, by the figures, recent figures, it It'll be a bit of a stretch, but you know, some uh, is this the race where uh, you cut corners by le leaving out Baffert? Probably, because we have the top trainer on here on the morning chalk, at who is winning most of his races on turf. Uh, leading trainer, um, uh, D'Amato, D'Amato, and he has Jockey Pratt up, Earl's Rock, Ireland, uh, has the nice numbers, recent numbers. Uh, he, D'Amato's on a, this one, five is on, it opens at three to one. Does D'Amato have another <coughs> ent entry? <coughs> and D'Amato has Irod Ortiz riding as 10, who has the best couple of, uh, best recent speed figures. And um, so that might be one we actually narrow it. You know what? Let's get it done. Let's get, uh, let's go five, 10 in the 10th race. We'll go with the top trainer. They use Baffert in this case. Uh, I know everyone loves Bob Baffert. Maybe some people really are, love him so much and don't know about racing that they just throw Baffert as a single in the last, the six to one whose speed figures look somewhat, somewhat light. Now, now I'm gonna tell you up front, there are a couple of a couple of entries in here that might stand a chance. It's an, it's an optional claiming race. Three of the 10 are in for the claim. It's an you know, 80K if you wanna claim the horse and, um, the purse is 74,000. So seven of the 10 aren't in for the claim. It may not be as simple as that, is just play the Demonos. But if you're going to narrow and you use the two Demonos, I think yeah, this is the one I, I, I go with it. And both of them are his Demonos entries are uh, the Earl's Rocks and uh, Lincoln Hawk of Irish descent. And uh, they have tremendous uh, turf racing in Ireland. So those Irish horses, you always got to consider them in here. Uh, this may be as simple as going to motto, but there are other couple, a few others in here to keep in mind too, and uh, the pace, etc. We'll be discussing that on the show. So uh, that's the rainbow, rainbow pick six day, closing day at Del Mar. It should be a, a tremendous card with these uh, graded stakes. We got the G3 in the fifth and the G1 in the uh, seventh here and a very competitive races, large fields. But again, there's probably gonna be multiple winners in this. And with the 541K plus uh, carryover, uh, you may not have to go nuts. You may be able to hit this because there's a lot of free money in this pool to begin with. They're not just who, who's wagering on it today. The best time to play the, the these pick sixes, by the way, for those pick six players out there, I, I, unless you're a heavy hitter and you really have the bankroll to cover it, the time to play it is when you have a nice payover.
pay out over a hundred, uh, uh, carry over over a hundred grand or more. You, know, you want to have extra money, free money uh, that's from previous days added to the pool today. And that's when you want to take a shot. And you want to take a shot at tracks that offer it like this for a reasonable price, to a 20 cents, uh, a 20 cent place. So if you're one of those Powerball players or, you know, with the lottery tickets, this is definitely a better chance to cash for something. Even if you pick, uh, you know, one horse in each race and play it for 20 cents, you've got a damn, you, you probably have a better, much better chance of at least connecting on a, in a rainbow six or a few tickets, you know, $5 worth of uh, different plays with singles and multiple legs and a couple of horses and another. Um, I've hit picks, pick fives a number of times where I only played the pick five for five bucks when there were six, three singles in the pick five. And, and I got back uh, uh, 200 bucks. And the other time I got back uh, like 97 bucks with $2 pick five plays. So, so that's doable too. You always got the pick fives there. Now, I don't play the pick fives very often, rarely play the pick six, but I have done uh, well you know, if you're watching the show or you've been watching the show, all horse racing all the time, especially those uh, those li those live shows. When I first started, I used to have a channel. I discontinued the channel. It was called uh, Coach Allen Presents. Okay, that's why a lot of the people that watch the show they call and refer to me as Coach. They know I started that channel in 2020 or. Uh, a couple, few years ago, I, and I started, it was a variety show, and then I started to add racing shows, and I started creating the racing report in 2020, in July of 2020, but before I started producing the report, I was doing some live shows, and within a week's period of live shows, I didn't play these, sh these, these uh, pick sixes, but I gave out the picks, and they were reasonably priced, and within a week, uh, eight days to be exact, I hit the, I gave out the Rainbow Six at Gulfstream and uh, they were just concluding the meet over at Belmont and I gave out a, a pick six at Belmont. So even though I don't play it, I, I, I have an idea of how to play it. I, I'm well read on that. If you want to uh, read the book by Stephen Christ, he's the king of the pick six. Um, he has a pick six book. Uh, uh, look up that of it on Amazon, Stephen Christ. Just a tremendous read. And uh, so you have different ways. And one of the ways also to keep in mind is to make multiple ticket, uh, multiple tickets, okay? We're not gonna get into that on this show, but that's one you know, using your backup horses in different legs. And instead of just using all your contenders in each leg, uh, put a little bit more weight into, the lay, into it, uh, um, into multiple tickets, putting a little bit more weight on, into the horses that you like best. In, in certain legs and you can you know cut the cost of your tickets we'll do a show on that another time but today have fun with it uh, keep in mind narrowing those legs down i'm going to be out there alive and uh have a great day whenever you're watching this if you're playing the earlier races or playing the races best of luck and bring it home win big all the best and talk with you soon